I'll see. I think it's six o'clock. Good evening, everybody. Um, first, I'd like to welcome you to the planning and zoning meeting for the city of Smyrna. Uh, today's Monday, November 10th, 2014 at 6 p.m. and this meeting's called to order. At this time, we'd ask that all your electronic devices, your telephones be turned off. They tend to interfere with our microphones and our recording equipment. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, this meeting is conducted much like a council meeting. As such, um, the application will include a presentation from city staff, followed by a question and answer session between staff and the board. Following staff's presentation, we'll have the applicant present their case and answer any questions. Once all the questions have been satisfied, we'll have an opportunity for anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to the application. We ask that you come forward one at a time, state your name and address for the record, and sign the sign-in sheet at the podium. Um, and please direct all your comments uh, to the board. All right, the first item on the agenda is Z14-2014. This is a rezoning request to rezone from R15 to RAD conditional for the construction of 36, a 36 lot subdivision. This is a 12.12 acre track at land lots 264, 265, 208, 216, and 220 Concord Road, uh, DBB Enterprises. Mr. Martin, the background, please. Good evening. Um, you all will hear this case tonight. Um, you'll make a recommendation to mayor and council. It'll go before the mayor and council on December, December 15th. Um, as Joel explained, this property is located at 208, 216, 220 Concord Road. It's approximately 12 acres in size and located in, in Ward 7. Um, there are four single-family homes on site three of which will be uh, demolished and one will remain. Um, the applicant is proposing to rezone the property from R15 to RAD conditional uh, for the development of a 36-lot 30, subdivision, 35 new homes, one existing home. Um, as you can see, here's the future development map. The subject property is, has a future land use designation of suburban residential. Um, they are not proposing to change that designation, so it will remain suburban residential, which is under three units per acre. Um, to the north, east, and south, all that property has a land use designation of uh, suburban residential as well. And the property to the west, Concord Grove, has a future land use designation of moderate density residential. Here's the proposed site plan. As you can see, the, the main access point for the subdivision is off Concord Road. Um, the proposed open space with the covered pavilion will be located in this location. The two detention ponds are located in these locations. Um, in addition, there'll be a 20-foot landscape buffer along Concord Road and Highview Drive, as well as um, sidewalks along Concord Road, Highview Drive, and then within the development. 
These are the proposed home elevations. This is, these are pictures of the subject property today. These are pictures of adjoining properties. These are just general representation of the area. They're not meant to be pictures of every property that surrounds us. Community development recommends approval of the rezoning from R15 to RAD conditional for 36 single family residences at a density of 2.97 uh, units per acre with the following conditions. This is a pretty extensive list. There's 30 uh, stipulations, so I'll try not to put you guys to sleep, but we'll go through it so everyone fully understands what staff is uh, asking for with this uh, rezoning request. Stipulation number one, the composition of the homes in the residential subdivision shall include a mixture of elements, including but not limited, limited to brick, stone, shake, hardy plank, and stucco. Number two, the developer should provide a vegetative buffer with a minimum width of 20 feet parallel to any right-of-way external to the development, and that's Concord Road and Highview Drive. Number three, there shall be protective covenants with a mandatory HOA. Number four, the developer shall provide at least 200 square feet of common space per lot. Number five, the detention and retention pond shall be placed and screened to be to appropriately to be unobtrusive to homes inside and outside the development. The stormwater detention plan shall be designed to create at least a 10% reduction in a two year to 100 year storm event. City engineer shall approve all plans. Number six, all utilities shall be underground. Number seven, the developer shall be responsible for any uh, traffic improvements deemed necessary by the city engineer. Number eight, the developer shall install a deceleration lane at the entrance of the subdivision. Um, the deceleration lane shall have a minimum length of 150 feet with a 50 foot taper. This stipulation may be removed. Um, the city engineer is currently going through the process of re reviewing whether a deceleration lane is warranted at this location. Um, so it may be removed prior to uh, going before mayor and council. Number nine, uh, a strip of brick pavers or, or stamped concrete shall be installed on the street at the subdivision entrance for a minimum distance of 20 feet. Number 10, the development of any streets shall be uh, built to uh, city standards. Number 11, no debris shall be buried on any lot or common area. Number 12, the developer shall install uh, decorative street lights within the development. Number 13, uh, the developer shall comply with the city's tree ordinance. Number 14, all landscape plans are to be uh, prepared and stamped by a registered Georgia uh, landscape architect. Number 15, all yards and common areas are to be sodded landscaped and irrigated where appropriate. Number 16, uh, this list the uh, uh, minimum amount of trees that need to be planted per lot. Number 17, uh, the developer is to uh, complete an archaeological study prior to uh, the issuance of a building permit. Now we're getting into the special conditions. These are uh, conditions that are not called out in the zoning ordinance and are specifically uh, geared towards this development. Number 18, the front development shall maintain, the development shall maintain the following setbacks. A front setback of 20 feet, side setback of 5, a street side of 20, and a rear setback of 20. 19, the development shall be, de the development shall be developed with a minimum lot size of 7,000 square feet. The proposed homes shall have a minimum floor area of 2,000 square feet, 21, all new homes shall be accessed from the new proposed public roads for, from the, for the subdivision. Number 22, the developer shall provide a five-foot sidewalk, two-foot grass buffer inside and outside the subdivision. Number 23, uh, the driveway shall be a minimum length of 22 feet from building face to back a sidewalk. Number 24, the developer shall be responsible for any water or sewer improvements deemed necessary for the provision of service to this community. Number 25, 
Uh, no stormwater management facility or portion thereof shall be located on any portion of the proposed lots. The stormwater management facility shall be solely located on HOA property. 26. The developer shall be responsible for the provision and dedication of any sanitary sewer easements for connection to the sanitary sewer system at time of final platting. The city public works director and parks director shall review and approve all easements. Number 27, all trees within the limits of disturbance and not located within a tree protection area must be removed during land clearing and grading phase of the development. And number 28, uh, approval of the zoning shall be conditioned upon the site plan. And number 29, the applicant shall be bound to the elevations represented here today. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those for you. Any questions for Mr. Martin? Thank you, Rusty. At this time, is the applicant in attendance? Could you come forward, state your name, address for the record, and tell us a little bit about your project? My name is uh, Brent Benson, and I live at 5452 Glen Ridge Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30342. Um, the project is similar to... Uh, two that I've, or one that I've already done and another one that I'm doing in Smyrna now called Park Place, which abuts the city park off North Cooper Lake Road. Same builder would come to this subdivision. More of a craftsman style product. Okay. Any questions? Yes. What's the price range of your houses? Right now on North Cooper Lake Road, they're uh, 450 is about the average price range. I'm, I expect these to be a little and, bit more. And if approved, when do you plan on starting this thing? As soon as I get through the the entire review process. I, I would say, and Rusty might be able to answer this better. I walked the property today. It, it's got a little slope. You don't foresee any water or mud problems, do you? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. I've, I've already been through that. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay. You were telling before uh, your timeline for construction. I, I would imagine break ground in February. I, I would think that the first homes would probably start July, August, you know, depending on weather. So. Any more questions? Don't y'all beat him up too hard now. All right. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. This is a public hearing. Uh, at this time, we'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that would like to speak in favor of or opposition to the application. Um, please come forward at this time, one at a time, state your name, address for the record. All these lovely people out here and nobody won't, has any questions or there we go we don't buy it i promise all right how you doing good evening uh my name is richard Icegruber. i live at 4049 norton place in smyrna actually i'm not in smyrna i'm just outside the city limits right. as you drive west and concord road right by the uh, smyrna jonquil sign just beyond that i live in norton place I'm neither for nor against this project. I realize that you have a considerable responsibility to both the property owner and the developer. Property rights, ownership rights are tantamount. All I ask of you is that you consider what's best for the community. It's a pristine piece of property. Are there other properties in Smyrna, Georgia that might be more conducive to a development such as DBB is proposing? Are there properties out there that would be less disruptive to the community? Concord Road is not going to get any wider because of the covered bridge in that arena down there. So from Hurt down to where I live, it's going to stay two lane. Uh, do we want to put another 36 houses on a beautiful piece of ground? that uh, 
uh, one of the adjacent properties has a sign hanging uh, on Concord Road that it's a wildlife refuge. I don't know for a fact that it is, but it could be. I just ask that you give due consideration to rezoning such a piece of property. I realize that development is what Smyrna's been all about and have done a miraculous job in the 17 years that I've lived here. Uh, but do we need to develop every inch, every square foot of vacant property? Is there some need for some properties to remain undeveloped? That's a question that you have to answer with the best interest of the developer and the property owner and keeping that in mind. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, sir. Excuse me. Ah. Sure. Don't don't fall in love with that writing utensil either. That's uh can we invest in a new pen maybe? Uh, <laughs> Here, Rusty. No, it's it's it's. Uh... Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Uh, one, I'm sorry. My name is Carl Tackett. I live in one of the, the pieces of property that will be in this development. I live at 220 Concord Road, which is Corner High View and Concord. I've lived there for 60 years. My wife was uh, the well, the only one that was existing, uh, well, she was the last survivor that lives in the area. And that property was the the uh, 208 Concord, the big yellow house, if you all been out there to look at it. And that house was built many years ago, and they it hadn't changed hands since December 1943. Wow and been in the family ever since. And, and when, uh, <clears throat> when Benny and I married in 1953, then her, her father owned that land all the way, which is Highview Drive now, all the way to Deerwood. And he, the, the property that is now Bennett Woods down behind us and Manson and all of those properties came off the O'Brien property. And he sold Rem Bennett 100 acres down there in 1965. And so uh, uh, Benny, my wife, and I, we built this house and finished it in 1961. And we lived there ever since. And I was unfortunate to lose her this May. But over the, over the past uh, 10 years, I would say, would be a, a rough estimate. We have been bombarded, bombarded, I said right a minute, with developers wanting to, to develop this piece of property. And even before they went on the other side, which was the Argo property, when they built those homes in there, they tried to buy this piece of property. Well, Miss O'Brien was still alive at this time, and she lived until uh, February of 2011, and she lived in this the big yellow house that she had lived in since 1943. And I said, there's no way that this property will be sold as long as she's alive. And and so when she passed, and then then after my wife passed, it's, it's got some good memories. So it's a, like this gentleman says here, it is a prime piece of property in Smyrna. 
the only the only piece that I know of that's uh, that's 12 or more acres. I don't know of any other one spot. And I don't know a piece of property in Smyrna that's been in the same family since 1943 either. Oh. So there's a, there's a whole lot of things, but uh, uh, the developers have done an excellent job, you know, processing with me and, and my son, his wife, who lived next door at, at 216. They have, they have done a, everything's, everything's, you know, the best that I can tell. Everything's been up and above board and, and truthful and, you know, everything, everything that we ask, you know, that they do, that they build quality homes, that they build, you know, maybe not multi-million dollar homes, but, you know, good homes, not, not some ramshackle thing that will disintegrate in 10 years or put mobile homes on or something like that, because we know y'all would never, never allow that either. So they have been upright as far as I can tell. And uh, so it's, and so I want to, uh, say that I approve of this company in their regards to the environment, to the to the to to me and and, the, and my family. And uh, so uh, I ask you to approve this. Thank you, Mr. Tag. Okay. Yes, and please sign the sign the sign in sheet at the podium. Somebody need to throw it away. Let's take it home. <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah, that's Is that it. your contribution? Yeah, they sell it to you. Good evening. I <clears throat> I apologize for being late. No My name is Elaine Kajadik. I live at 208 Concord Road, and I have um, three different viewpoints. One, um, when Mr. Tackett's wife passed, I promised Miss Benny I would take care of him. And I'm here tonight to make sure that he is well taken care of and the developers aren't taking advantage of him. <clears throat> um, two, I'm also here because it's a beautiful piece of real estate. It's absolutely gorgeous. And... It's going to be gone. I mowed the lawn for the last time on Sunday with tears in my eyes, and it's going to be a shame. And the other thing is, um, where are the gentlemen from DBE Enterprises? Hi. When you sign your deal, you're making your home. So <laughs> it's really kind of all I wanted to say because once the deal is signed, there are two families who live at 208 Concord Road who will be homeless. So... Good luck, guys. And I will sign in. Thank you for your comments. Good evening. I'm Charlene Nix. I live on Manson Avenue, just behind this development. My neighbor is here with me. I have a couple of concerns. Uh, one is the retention pond. I have been looking at this and asking questions prior to tonight. I've made some calls. Um, the retention pond looks like it could be perhaps more nearly just behind my neighbor's home. And then the first homes perhaps behind. I, I'm not good at judging, but um, I'm a little concerned about the retention pond being adjacent to our property line, right behind our property line. I am neither against nor for the development. Carl's a longtime friend, and his wife, Benny, was too. Um, just have concerns. I've been there. I'm into my 47th year on this property. Wow. Um, and I am alone. So are my two neighbors on either side. Um, so I'm, the retention pond is one concern. The next is that the, the homes that will be backing up to our 
property line near our, what I have now is a, uh, just a, a cyclone fence, um, that they will be two-story with perhaps basements and looking down into my property. I don't know what the plans are for leaving, for trees being left or trees being planted. A fence wouldn't help. That's not going to help as far as sight line. Um, those are probably the two biggest concerns. I frankly had not considered the traffic <laughs> that hadn't dawned on me, but Concord Road is extremely busy. <laughs> yes, I mean, if you drive it often, and I do, and I have been for 47 years, getting in and out can be a problem. Um, you know, I'm certainly not against progress, and I want something nice to be there. But I do have, I, I suppose those are the two greatest pro, uh, questions or concerns I have are the retention pond and then the buffer or what would happen between my property and my two neighbors, or three, I don't know how far down it goes, um, and how much we would be protected from just feeling like we have been. I've been down North Cooper Lake. I've done that twice, too. And I know the last ranch home on the right before the development starts, and I know the lady who lives there. She's also a widow and alone. And I don't know what the plans are. Right now it's just a silt fence. But their ba the new basement to the first house built in that property looks in her kitchen. It's, it's on line with her, that end of her home looking into and uh, that's it's just like taking any of your privacy away. Yeah. So those are my concerns. Like I said, Tackett's are longtime friends, and uh, so I'm not against anything. Just want to be sure that those of us who have been there a long time are also <clears throat> protected from from what's going in. Absolutely. And um, you speak about two. Um Two very important issues. One, um, the retention pond issue, uh, controlling the outflow of the water. Um, it, you know, it's two. It's twofold. It's having a developer, um, and I'm sure Brett will do a fine job of trying to protect you guys. Um, his job is to keep more water on the site than comes on to you today. Thank um, you. It's about his engineers knowing what they're doing, him being able to employ that plan, and then the city following up to make sure that happens. Um, the only thing I can tell you is whether this gets approved or not. Um, at some point in the future, this piece of property will be developed. And it's the nature of, of real estate. Uh, I would reach out to Brett and, and reach out to the city and be part of the dialogue going forward okay. <laughs> um, so, that, so that you have... You know that you have your you have all the information yes. that that Brett's engineers are giving the city, um, and, and that the city's going to follow up on, so that you're comfortable with what's going on back there. Because there's the obvious stuff, the noise and the dirt and everything else Correct. that's just part of it. That, right. that you're just going to have to grin and it goes bear. Goes with it. it. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I I will be at the council meeting. And I, as I said, I've been looking at the calling and inv investigating prior to because I know my husband would be doing this if if it weren't if I were if he was here he would be asking these questions and questioning it and uh, wanting to know the answers so um, and there are several of us in the same position so that is why I'm here and I just those two concerns are my greatest I think so well, I we appreciate, appreciate you coming out, and please make sure you sign the, the sign-in sheet. I brought my own pen. So. Very good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I grew up here in Smyrna, and uh, I've been here a while, except for a few years where I ran out of town and tried to get educated. But it's awesome to sit up here today and, and hear about another part of the community. I grew up closer to where we are today, uh, but it's awesome to hear about um, your community over there and how tight knit you guys are and looking out for each other and it's what I know of where I grew up so and we do that's we do. awesome thank you I think we should have brought some dishes and had, had a little uh, chow while we were here <laughs> I am
I'm Charlene's neighbor, Valerie Luke. Um, Welcome, Miss Luke. Thank you. I live at 3864 Manson, right behind Mr. Tackett. Um, I have, of course, the same concerns as Charlene does. I know my one voice is not going to make a difference. It's not going to impede progress in any way, and I would not want Mr. Tackett not to um, make money off of, you know, selling his property. As you said, it's going to happen someday. I have the concerns of the, the retention, retention pond. I don't know really what a retention pond is. I'm a city girl. I just don't know much about retention ponds, but I don't like the sound of it being in my backyard uh, unless it's, you know, done very discreetly. I don't know any, I, I hope the buffer zone is going to be enough that, well, like Charlene says, we are ranch houses. Y'all, these houses are going to be overpowering us. They're looking down on us. So, my uh, and, and and of course the traffic. Um, it does break my heart when I see these subdivisions going up with three houses on one acre. This land is beautiful. It's if there were any way to make it uh, less dense, I would find that very very appealing. But again. My voice, one voice isn't going to make a big difference, and it's going to happen someday. But I did want you to know that I, uh, I live there. And uh, I haven't lived there 40 years. I've been in Smyrna 40 years. Only been uh, five years in Bennett Woods. But I hope to be there a lot longer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Luke. Um, one other thing. That I'll, is there anybody else that would like to come forward? Okay, um, back to the point that I mentioned about working with the developer. Um, it's common practice for things to be written, stipulations to be written in. We have 30 stipulations here. It's pretty aggressive uh, to protect everybody around this development. Um, it's common practice for things to be written in. If you work with these guys, uh, and I'm, I'm sure they would much rather not have to fight you for the next... 15 months, you know, to two years, they'd rather work with you. Um, yeah, I think you, you'll get a lot further. And it seems like you're very reasonable folks. Brett, did you want to make a comment or are you just stretching? I, just, I gave them my phone number. So Excellent. Um, Excellent. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right, is there any, anybody else that would like to come forward? Okay. Um, at this time, we'd like to ask um, for a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on rezoning request Z14024, rezoning from R15 to RAD conditional for the construction of a 36-lot subdivision, 12.12-acre track, land lots 264, 265, 208, 216, 220. I'm making a motion we approve. Got a motion, Mr. Rice, for approval. Second. Second, Mr. Campo. All in favor? The application is approved 7 0. Thank you guys very much for coming out tonight. Um, last item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from the September 8th, 2014 planning and zoning meeting. Are the board members in possession of the minutes? Are there any changes we need to make at this time? And a motion for approval. Motion, Mr. Whittington. Second, Mr. Rice. All in favor? The minutes are approved 7 0. Without any further business, we're going to call this meeting adjourned at uh, 634. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.